Global news ends up affecting all of us. The terrible events in Israel, the wicked massacre by Hamas, has led to things happening in the United Kingdom, in Australia, and in Dagestan that have been hostile to the Jewish community. Anti-Semitic outbreaks have been known, and some of our fellow citizens are living in fear in their own country and are requiring protection. It's been a 1,300% increase in anti-Semitic crimes in the United Kingdom. And sometimes the police don't seem to act. They don't seem to arrest the people ch chanting for Hamas. And they do seem to take down posters in support of hostages. These issues are fundamental to how we see ourselves as a liberal democratic state. So I'm so pleased to be able to discuss them with Tony Abbott. Welcome, thank you for coming on GB News. As a former Prime Minister, somebody on the world stage, with the problem there is in Israel and Palestine at the moment, how concerned are you about the ramifications of it and whether it could have an issue for world peace? I think these are very challenging times. I think they're the most challenging times the free world has faced, at least since the late 1930s. Uh, yes, we now have had a dreadful reminder of uh, the Islamist death cults and their plans for people who don't worship as they do and don't think as they do. We've still got the dreadful situation in Ukraine and, of course, uh, looking uh, ominously across the Taiwan Straits, there's Xi Jinping with his beady eyes on Taiwan. So, so these are very dangerous times uh, for democracies. And it's important not only that we be as militarily prepared as we can be, it's also important that we look at these things with moral clarity. And that's what's been completely absent on the streets of London, on the streets of Sydney, uh, on the streets of so many Western capitals over the last few weeks. We've seen uh, raucous, sometimes violent mobs uh, illustrating uh, what can only be described as a, a deep, anti-Semitism, dressed up as anti-Zionism. It's frankly been nothing less than the most loathsome race hate that we have seen. So, in a sense, unexpectedly uh, on our own streets. And we have the Jewish population feeling unsafe mm -hmm. in countries across the world where they'd previously felt safe and schools in this country uh, having to have guards to protect uh -huh. them. And uh, a seeming lack of action by the police, that yesterday there were reports of police taking down posters with pictures of hostages on mm -hmm. them, saying that they wanted to lower the tension, but then not arresting extremist uh, Hamas-supporting protesters. Exactly right. There, there has appeared to be a uh, serious double standard uh, here, uh, not just in this country, but in other countries, including Australia. We have a very active uh, human rights apparatus, uh, anti-racism, anti-discrimination apparatus. If people on the streets of Sydney had been screaming out, uh, gas some other uh, race or nationality, or F some other race or nationality, I think the, uh, uh, the uh, anti-racist apparatus would be down on them like a ton of bricks. But as far as we're aware, there hasn't even been an investigation, let alone arrests, in the case of people who were clearly guilty of the most appalling race hatred, public race hatred in our midst. And there seems to be some naivety amongst politicians calling for a ceasefire, because it would be a very one-sided ceasefire, wouldn't it? It would purely be Israel not defending itself while still suffering from attacks from Hamas. E exactly right. Um, uh, Hamas... Uh, and, and other enemies of the West are, are happy to prey on our essential decency, but they're exploiting it for their own purposes. And uh, calls for a unilateral ceasefire are, are, are directed clearly against Israel. They just allow Hamas to regroup and ready itself for yet another atrocity like October the 7th. And you made the point at the beginning that we need to have moral certainty mm -hmm. about what we're doing mm -hmm. and that we have, in a way, two 
live proxy wars going on. One in Ukraine, mm -hmm. which is losing attention mm -hmm. because of the second one that's going on mm -hmm. uh, in Israel. And we've got the risk of a third in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And if we're not certain about where we stand, this makes it easier for our enemies to attack us and to do things that they feel they can get away with, to keep on pushing at the edges. Yeah, ex exactly right. As Churchill famously said in a different context, I refuse to be impartial as between the fire brigade and the fire. Uh, we, we, we need to understand, uh, and I think we've been willfully um, oblivious to this, we need to understand that not everyone thinks as we do. Uh, Vladimir Putin does not think the way Rishi Sunak does or Anthony Albanese does. Uh, Xi Jinping does not think the way Joe Biden does. Um, the Hamas death cultists do not think the way religious people in this country do. Uh, Putin sees himself as on, uh, in his terms, a sacred mission to recreate greater Russia. Uh, Xi Jinping sees himself as uh, having a historical destiny to um, overcome the century of humiliation, so-called, uh, by taking Taiwan first, dominating the region second and third, establishing global hegemony. Um, and as far as these people are concerned, the welfare of their own people is only a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. And this is why in Gaza you see Hamas uh, cheerfully using hospitals uh, and civilians as human shields and as fronts for what are effectively military command and operations centres. So we have to understand that, that they don't think as we do and if they are to be responded to effectively, we can't allow uh, squeamishness uh, to, uh, to stop what needs to be done. Now, obviously, all civilian deaths are tragic uh, but only some are an atrocity. Uh, what Hamas did to civilians in Israel was an atrocity. If, regrettably, uh, military operations that have been planned to try to minimise and wherever possible avoid civilian casualties do cause civilian casualties because the civilians are literally being shoved in front of the Hamas fighters, well, some are unavoidable and there's no real moral culpability on Israel in the sense that there was a dreadful and deep moral culpability uh, on the Hamas people. And from the point of view of Western values and the maintenance of them and the maintenance of liberal democracies, um, it's very important that Israel is able to establish some form of peace and some method of victory. Well, exactly right. I, I, I mean, the one thing that no Palestinian leader has ever been prepared to say in Arabic uh, is an acceptance of Israel's right to exist behind secure borders. Uh, occasionally they've said it in English at the UN, but they've never been prepared to say it in Arabic to their own people. Instead, what we've had uh, for a couple of generations now is this constant diet of race, hate, the Jews have supposedly stolen the land. The Jews are supposedly uh, the root of all evil, in particular all of the misfortunes that uh, the Palestinians face, when in fact 90% um, of the Palestinians' difficulty is the fault of a leadership which is basically waging a perpetual war rather than trying to build a lasting and sustainable peace. And the difficulty with perpetual war is that the West can't really fight wars on three fronts, can it? So um, it can support Ukraine, it can support Israel. If Taiwan were invaded, that would be a great stretch. How do we work with like-minded people, with allies, and with people like Saudi Arabia, who are reasonably close mm. to us but aren't always on mm. our side, mm. to try and have some more permanent peace? Well, I, I, we obviously need to, uh, uh, to find areas of common interest and uh, common good with as many countries as, as we can. And I think there's no doubt that the leadership of, the Saudi, of Saudi Arabia 
uh, was keen uh, until this recent issue to establish a cordial working relationship with Israel to suspend the notional hostilities which have existed for many years. One of the very unfortunate side effects of this is, uh, is, is they feel they can't go forward with this at, at this time. But more generally, uh, while building bridges to those who are our potential allies, at least in some things, if not in all, we've also got to let the, uh, our strategic antagonists know that there will be serious consequences uh, to any attempt uh, to uh, uh, exploit these situations. Now, uh, we all know that uh, if the commissars in Beijing think that, that an attack on Taiwan will be 1.4 billion Chinese against 25 million Taiwanese, that's pretty one-sided. That's an easy win for the bad guys. Well, they need to know that it won't just be China versus Taiwan. It will be China against a strong, or at least the communist Chinese government, against a strong alliance of democracies. And this is where I think uh, President Biden has been quite sensible in saying four times, four times, in response to direct questions about Taiwan, that America would defend Taiwan. Now, he hasn't formally abandoned the policy of strategic ambiguity, but I think he has effectively rewritten what it means.